get it like this, so I'm going to say it for another time. for your glory. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister Sheila. Thank you for that. testimony as in our numbers, as in our power, as in our money, because we know we have very few of all of those yeah. things, but we boast in your power, yeah. Father, yeah. and we recognize everything that you've allowed us to accomplish has, yeah. has not been because of us, but it's been because of your Holy Spirit and your yeah. power, yeah. and we've been able to experience it in real time. We've yeah. been able to see it yeah. in real time, and we honor you for that, Father. We honor you for choosing us and as the scripture says, putting your name in our foreheads. Yes. We belong to you. We've been yes. sealed yes. by the Holy Spirit, and we honor you for that, Father. Yes. Thank you for each and every one on the sound of my voice, for our pastor, first lady, and all those assembled. I pray your choice blessings upon each and every one of us yes. as we enter into a time of reflection on your word. I ask that you will open up our hearts and our spiritual ears that we can hear plainly, Lord with perfect understanding what you will say to the church. It's in the precious, again, in the holy name of Jesus, we receive it. Amen. 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 I do thank God for each and every one of you again, and all of the, to our pastor, all of the men in the house, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> all the women in the house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we missing our babies today, yes. even though we still got Tamara. I'm, she, she's still considered a baby uh, to me and probably to her mom as well. And, and I, know, I know I still consider my niece a baby, even though she's 21 years old. So that's just how we do it. And I do thank God for my mother here as well. And thank you, Sister Terry, for coming as well. And as we've been, in, I'm, I'm gonna use the board. I'm really not gonna use it long, brother Mike, brother Jason. You don't mind? You bring the board up for me. Cause I don't have a whole. I'm just gonna write one thing on it, and I'll be done. And thank God for the Sunday school lesson, the testimonies, the uh, pastoral comments, the songs of praise. So I won't be very long. I just want to add to what has already been spoken. Thank you so much. Is that good for everybody? Can everybody see? Yeah, y'all. Okay, y'all. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Amen. What she said? She was being smart with y'all, brother Mike. What she said? Just in my eyes. <laughs> Look at it all being like that. Don't do that, Sister Victoria. You know, and I was, as I was preparing, because I, I really didn't know, um, Pastor will, will tell you, we prepare sometimes, but I really didn't know what I was going to teach on today. I just knew it would be about Noah, because that's where we've been and that's where we've been hanging out. And so as I was reflecting, uh, just, you know, depending on how the service goes, I try to be, hold, uh, you know, under the direction of the Holy Spirit to see what direction to go in. And as I was staying up there, just, I, was, I kept looking back at this sign and reflecting on what we've been doing uh, for the 40 nights and 40 days, 40 nights in duration. And we're about halfway, I think. I can't remember what song we're on. We're on 27, maybe somewhere around those lines. 29, okay. Yeah, so we, we're, we're past the halfway point. As I was reflecting, um, God gave me a simple, a simple message, and that's what I want to use the board for. I saw this online a couple weeks ago, and I didn't think nothing of it. But as I was standing up there, the Lord put it in perspective uh, for me and for us. And we know how great 2020 was for us. Yeah. And what the Lord showed me was Can everybody see that? Yeah. <laughs> I saw this online. And that was the first thing the Lord brought back to me as I was reflecting. Because y'all know I don't take from my messages based on the year. Pastor doesn't either. We just kind of flow with the Lord. Gave us, but sometimes he'll give us special instructions for the year. 2020 was an example yeah. of that. The wait is over. That's what the Lord told us. Yeah. Despite all the things that, that have been happening yeah. in the last few years, God was telling us he's going to reach a crescendo. It. It and now all the things that we've been waiting for, he's going to be able to give that it to is. us starting it in is. 2020. That's right. 2021 was almost a blur. It was a trying, it's been yeah. a trying year, so to speak. God told me 2022 is going to be even worse in 2021 for the world. Oh. <laughs> 2022 is going to be bad for the world. Yeah. So he told me I was right up there. Right. 40 days, 40 nights. It, it always represented judgment. But before right. it was people, it represented God's sustaining mm -hmm. power. Yeah. And that's what God's going to do for us for 2022. Yeah. He's going to sustain us no matter what's going on outside of yeah. what the church has. Yeah. He's going to show us. Yeah. Because yeah. God, He doesn't have to confirm the word, but He does it for yeah. Israel. Yeah. The world always wants a sign. Yeah. You know, they always say, if God is real, show me, do this. And He never does it. But for His people, He'll give us signs. We don't even ask for it. He just confirm it and start like, dang, Lord, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. But God says, 2022 going to be a harping for us back to 2020. All right. Yeah. 2020 is going to be a harping yeah. back to 2020. Ooh. We can embrace it now. We yeah. can shout now. We got the victory now. It's going to happen. And so you can't say 2022 uh, without using 2020, right? 2022 uh -huh. is the year. But really, in reality, for us, it's just 2022. It's just 2020 all over again. It's 2020 all over. Hallelujah. That's what we can. That's what we can expect. Right, yeah. First lady got all the blessings, and that ain't fair. 
that he gave, <laughs> she didn't doubt, she didn't slip in her faith, and she was the one that reminded us, no matter how bad it gets, that's what the Lord says, so I believe, and she was able to harp onto all those blessings. Yes, Lord. And I said, this time, I'm not going to miss out. I'm going to get mine. I'm not going to allow, when it start getting bad, remember the word of the Lord and be encouraged to know what he said. Don't go by what your eyes see, because I can promise you and assure you, the world is in a bad state yes. right now culturally. The world is always in a bad state. So I don't, and I'm not so I'm not saying this uh, in terms of as, like the world was ever a great place. We've seen it from the beginning in Sunday school, which has yeah. been jacked up. Yeah. But what I mean is as for a culture right. and what's going on right now, people are basically saying, I don't care what happens. We ain't going to shut nothing down. We don't care about this. We don't care about that. We're yeah. going to get our money. We don't care if people die. We don't care if the children die. We don't care. And so God is going to do something this year to remind everybody that he's God. No matter how much you fight against it, God is going to continue to get his glory. And it's going to get worse for the world. I can promise you that today, January, what's the, the second? I can promise you it's going to get bad for the world in 2022. But God will sustain his people. We've been dealing with Noah, and as I've said, we probably know Noah's first name, middle name, last name, children, social security number, his place of business, his house, because we've been hanging out with Noah for so long. Noah, uh, he said Noah in Genesis chapter 8, speaking about Noah, verse 18, and Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, every fowl, whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth where? Out of the ark. They were in the ark, we discovered, for about a year, couple, in a couple days. That's a long time to be shut up in one place. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord. And that's what I want to focus on for this message. Noah built an altar unto the Lord. He took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered what? Burnt offerings on the altar, meaning something had to not only die, but be thoroughly burned. Jesus said, I'm going to need gold. I want you to be gold, but you're going to have to be tried through the fire to be gold. Again, as 2022 hits and all of these things happen, our faith is going to be tested to see if we believe the word of God, if we can stand on the word of God. Everybody can do the right thing yeah. when everything's going good, right? Yeah. It's easy. Jesus said that if I just love the people that love me, yeah. okay, the world do that. Yeah. If I just give to people and, and lend money to people who I know got gainfully, uh, gainfully employed, great jobs, and can pay me back, That's right. it ain't nothing. The world is right. But if I can love you yeah. and I know you hate my guts, yeah. if I can give you money, knowing I'm never going to get it back. So as these things happen, we're going to have to ask ourselves, is our faith really where it says, it is, right? Where, where we think it is. And as these things happen on the earth, that's what I want us to harken back to, the word of God. What that's going to take is us being burned on the altar, right? That's going to take us being thoroughly cleansed by the Lord. The scripture says Jesus is the one with the the the, the flame, uh, what you call it, Pastor, the flame, uh, fanning flame or something like that. He's the one that's going to purge us. Yeah. His fan is in his hand. That's what I was looking for. He'll thoroughly purge us, right? He is the one who does the cleansing. Uh -huh. But what do we do? We submit to him on the altar. Yeah. Yeah. This is a personal thing of me saying, Lord, I'm coming to the altar so you can thoroughly cleanse me. I want to be purged. I want to be burned. And everything that's not like you, I need you to take it away. I'm no longer going to sit by and allow the devil to rule in my life. I'm not going to give him place to have stolen blessings from me. I'm going to submit now to the altar of the Lord so I can be thoroughly burned. I need him to purge me. He's the one that has the fan in his hand, and he's the one that can do it. And after Noah builds this altar unto the Lord, he offers burnt offerings on the altar. Verse 21 says, the Lord smelled what? Sweet. A sweet. 
sweet savor, meaning it was a good aroma. And when we make up in our mind, again, it starts with a mindset. Be transformed how? By the renewing of your mind. It starts with our mindset. When we have a mind that nothing is going to keep me from accomplishing the will of God in my life, we cannot be stopped. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Let me say it just one more time. If my mind is just right, uh-huh. that come hell or high water, I'm going to do what the Lord That's said. Right. That's it. There are so many opportunities to turn back. Of course there is. But Hebrews 11 says that if the men and women of old had sought an opportunity uh-huh. to go back, they would have went back. Because they had every opportunity, but they didn't. They were looking for a building yeah. whose builder and maker was the Lord. Not focused on carnal things, not focused on temporary things, but we're trying to please a holy God. We're trying to please the Lord who is spirit. So we have to please him, not with our flesh, but with our spirit. Right? That means my joy got to be on point. My attitude got to be on point. My peace with all men got to be on point. My singing to the Lord, offering praises, the sacrifice of praise to his name. My treatment of my brothers and sisters, my giving to the poor, right. right? Our taking care of our children. That's right. All of these things are, as the scripture puts it here, they're a sweet fragrance or aroma uh-huh. in the nostrils of the Lord. Because I've burned away my flesh. Uh-huh. I've burned away the fleshly desires That's to right. present myself to God. Mm-hmm. The last verse I want from this is 21. The B portion says, God says, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Why? Imagination of man's heart is evil from us. You guys, I know him. Ain't nothing good in him. (laughs) I'm going to give him some grace and mercy. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing or everything living as I have done. Well, we might as well take verse 22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. And that's why since we've been born, every day the sun has been where it's supposed to be. The moon has been where it's supposed to be. The scripture goes even further and tells us that God doesn't just put a divide like a shower where it rains on you and then doesn't rain on me. He makes his good, his grace, his mercy to fall on the just as well as the unjust. That's why he tells us when we treat our enemies like our friend or love them anyway, you're being like your father who is in heaven. Because he's already set the, set the example. He doesn't destroy us just because we don't know who he is. He's long-suffering. He's good to us, matter of fact. Even when we're bad, he's still good to us because it's the goodness of the Lord that leads to repentance, right? First Chronicles chapter 22. We're going to hang out there and then we'll be done. First Chronicles chapter 22. But the main takeaway is let's be encouraged about this year. And not because God's going to bless us, because he always does. We know that he's always going to show out on our behalf because we belong to him. But more than anything, we want to use this as a testimony to his goodness so that people in the world can see no matter what's going on in the world, God's kingdom does not submit to worldly authority. When they had Jesus before Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate was on his high horse and feeling himself because he was the governor. And he said, don't you know I have the right to free you or kill you? And Jesus said, you would not have any authority or power except it were given to you by my father who is in heaven. The enemy can't have any say-so in our lives unless we just hand over the keys. Imagine telling, giving the devil the keys and saying, here you go, take us off this cliff. That's what we do when we don't submit to the kingdom of God. But God's kingdom rules and reigns over all. So no matter what's going on in the world, there's a kingdom we're in where we're able to stay strong. We're able to pray to a holy God who hears. We're able to cry out in the midnight hour and see him come through time and time again. I can hear the scripture being read that he shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That's what he's done for us. In 1 Chronicles chapter 22, as we talk about David and Solomon, what does the name Noah mean? Rest. Rest. I thought that I might have a longer, I should have said not y'all, but I, I thought I might have a longer pause, but that means everybody's paying attention. I appreciate that. The name Noah means rest. 
because it was prophesied by his father, Lamech, that Noah would bring about a comfort after the Lord had cursed the ground. And Noah represented symbolically a new beginning for mankind. God was upset he had destroyed the world. Everything that had the breath of life in it was destroyed except Noah, Miss Noah Smith, Japheth, Miss Japheth Smith. I'm just using Smith because that's my last name. Don't get offended. You can use your last name if you want to. Sham, Miss Sham, Ham, Miss Ham. Eight souls in the ark. Mm -hmm. Eight is the number of newness, yes, wow. <clears throat> new beginnings. Mm -hmm. Seven days in the week. Mm -hmm. The eighth day represents a begin, a, a redoing of the week, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I brought up Noah meaning rest because we're going to talk about David and Solomon shortly here. And Solomon was going to have rest, mm -hmm. right? Y'all mind if I... Pardon me for a second. I want to show off the best team in basketball right now. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Like that heat kicking on good, so I can take off my, my jacket. It's feeling good. <laughs> but rest is super important. We talked about last week the Holy Spirit brings rest because the Holy Spirit gives us insight or it gives us spiritual eyes so that we can see how to navigate a crazy world. That means we can have rest and peace when there's chaos going on all around us. The world was being brutally destroyed, right? Rain, floods, the waters had reached the top of the mountains, but inside the ark, Noah and his family chilling, watching sports center, not even knowing what's going on. That's the solace that God's provided God provides for us as his people. Amen. We have to bank on that. That's right. That's right. Do you know how many things come in a day to take away our rest yeah. and our peace? Yes. I laid me down to sleep yes. and I got up, David says, because the Lord sustained me. Yes. Yes. I'm relying on him for a good, night, good night's rest, for my health to be intact, yes. for me to be able to use my limbs and arms, for me to make a living, yes. to be able to raise my children. I'm relying upon him, not me. That's right. Amen. The Lord is our peace. Yes. He is our rest. Yes, is. First Chronicles chapter 22, starting at verse 1. David says, this is the house of the Lord God. And this is what? The altar, the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. As soon as Noah and them got out the ark, the first thing Noah did was offer burnt offerings to the Lord. Again, on the altar Thoroughly purged. I need everything burned. That's what we do when we submit to the Lord. All of our flesh has to die daily. I'm saying, Lord, eat up everything. Let the fire purge everything. But if we have just even one teeny ounce of anything that's not of the Lord, it's going to affect how we walk down here. It's going to, it can be the tiniest thing. It will change everything. It was this movie called Deja Vu. With Denzel Washington. Yeah, yeah. They kept trying to go back in time to prevent a bomb from going off <clears throat> and to prevent his friend's death. But every time they would change something, they really wouldn't change nothing at all. Because they would change something on the appearance, but the result would be the same. Right? He said, man, we changed something, but we didn't change nothing at all. When we change the tiniest thing, or we keep the tiniest thing in our lives that separates us from God, it still has that same whirlwind effect yeah. on our lives. Like if I keep one thing out of 55, it's going to lead to the same destination as the 55. Right. I might as well keep the 55 bad things because that one thing could penalize the whole thing. When I'm saying, Lord, purge me, I'm saying there's nothing that's ever going to stop me from wanting to fulfill your will. Yeah. No person, no thing. I'm submitting to your authority. I'm on the altar to die. I'm dying to what? Not my will, but yours be done. Even Jesus, who was the son of God, everything he does was an example for us. So Jesus, even though he had authority and was God, the scripture says he didn't cling to that right as God, but made himself of no reputation. Meaning even when he was at his weakest moments, he said, nevertheless, not my will, 
but yours be done. So we say it all the time, does man have a will? Sure, but we don't want our will to be done. We want God's will to be done. Because my will is just to sin, wake up tomorrow, sin, mess it up again, then sin again. That's fine. That's fine. So that's why we're relying on God. We're saying, God, your will be done. God, I, I submit to you where I have it. I'm sorry, but I need you to cleanse me, Lord. I need you to purge me from my sins, from my old ways so that I can follow you. And if you make me new, I can follow you. So David says, this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel, and he set masons to do what? Few raw stones. Are y'all in, in, in First Chronicles 22? Okay, I'm just making sure. Y'all might be in Second Chronicles. <clears throat> and so he wants the masons to do what? Few raw stones to build the house of God. What does that mean? Cut out like you're, you're calling the carpenters, you're calling the masons, you're calling the master builders. And David prepared iron how? In few? Abundance. A lot of it. In abundance for the nails, for the doors of the gates, for the joinings, for the brass in abundance without weight. The cedar trees, how? Abundance. <coughs> abundance, excuse me. For the Zidonians. And they of Tyre brought what? Much cedar wood to David. Why is all this be, being done? David is in preparation for Solomon. He's doing all of the work so that his son can walk on in with ease. That's what God provides for us. Jesus accomplished everything that he needed to accomplish, the scripture says, and he ascended to the right hand of the Father, ascended to the right hand of the Most High, and sat down. Because he had completed the work and brought in rest. He completed the work so that we could enter into his rest. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. Amen. Okay? David could never build the Lord a house like he wanted to. Because we know David's story. He was a man after God's own heart. He loved the Lord. He sought the Lord. He was the shepherd of the sheep. But David had, what, a lot of blood <laughs> on his hands. He was a type. His son Solomon represented what God had prepared fully for us, okay? And so David said, Solomon, verse 5, my son is what? Young, Young <laughs> and tender. And the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceeding magnificent. Man, I don't think I ever read that in the Bible before. That's almost like exceeding abundantly, right? Exceeding magnificent. I'm pretty sure that means magnificent, but man, I've never heard it said magnificent before. Of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I mean, this house got to look so good because it's representing God so that people, when they see it, it's going to travel. We're going to travel to the countries that don't even know we exist about these people who have built this house for the Lord. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David did what? He prepared abundantly for his death. And just a side note, this don't have nothing to do with my message, but in actuality it has everything to do with my message because David shows us we should have a legacy left That's for the right. next generation. Right. For our children's That's children's right. children, we should have a legacy right. left. Not for us, it's not about us being selfish, it's about setting them up right. so that they can prosper in a way that we never did. That's right. That's right. David had all, all a great life in terms of his abundance, in terms of him being That's king, fine. but he still had the mind that I'm going to allow my son to outdo me. Yeah. That should be our mindset. Yeah. Paul said he feels like God had put the apostles last, as it were, as it pertains to death, because they were going through all these things. But their death and their persecution meant everything for us, because That's we get fine. to read what they wrote. Right. We get to go through what they've been through. We get to read their encouraging words so that we can live a life that they never had the opportunity to live. If everybody's selfish, how will anything ever get accomplished? If Martin Luther King was just like, man, forget them people. I'm just about to go on about my business. And just like, thank God for people who don't mind sacrificing. Amen. Because some of us in that position, we would have took the money and ran. Ran to Cancun, right? Because they, I mean, that's amazing to me. God got to get the glory in it. And they give you $60,000 for the Nobel Peace Prize. 
This is in the 60s. You get that amount of money. And your first thought is, let's put this back in the movement. Let's put this back in the conference. Let, let's make God be glorified with this money. Now I'm just about to go do my own thing. Mindset. God can accomplish major things for us when we just have a mind that's in line with his will, not our own. So David prepares this house to be built for the Lord for his son Solomon. So he called for Solomon, his son, and he charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, guess what? I wanted to do it. It was in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord, my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, David, I'm sorry, bro. You shed blood upon me. <laughs> you done made great wars. You shall not build a house unto my name because you shed much blood upon the earth yeah. in my sight. But listen to this. Behold, a son shall be born to thee. And I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Forgive me. I know I need to wrap this up. But man, there's so much here. God is getting us to enter into his rest, right? We're going to be able to rest in 2022. Yeah. That's the overall picture. I want us to see it while I'm reading this. But this is the cool thing. David didn't get to build a house to the Lord. But his son, that's just like I'm able to do it. I don't get that. If my son is doing it, it's just like I'm able to do it. My son is me. He's just an extension of me. So David was cut out. Technically, yeah, he was cut out a little bit. But God, who loved David and is always full of grace and mercy, said, I'm still going to allow you to experience it through your son. Mm -hmm. Even though you shed blood, even though you did all these things, yeah. I don't want you to ever get it twisted that I still got a plan for you. That's right. Amen. And so his son, Solomon, mm -hmm. who everybody rejected, yeah. who came about through not the best means, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't conceived in the best way. Right. But the scripture says God loved him. Yes. And he was the one, even though he wasn't in line to be on the throne the way David's other children was, God had chosen Solomon. Right. God has chosen us for this time. We got to realize that we got to walk as champions, That's as right. spiritual giants and know, man, this is my time. I know that. I'm certain that this is my time. That's why I can walk and talk the way I do because my confidence is not in me. It's in God who appointed me for this time. Wasn't nothing going to stop this house from being built. God had ordered it and ordained it. He had spoken to David and David accepted the word, believed it, embraced it, and prepared for Solomon his son. He didn't say, well, I didn't get this when I was growing up, or I didn't do that, yeah. so he's going to suffer just like me. He said, no, my son's going to have the very best. Even though I'm not going to be able to build a house, when my son build it, he ain't going to lack nothing. Thank you, Pastor. I said, thank you, Pastor. That's because that's the Pastor is preparing. He's preparing. He made my life so easy. I'm telling you, man. He made my life super easy. He couldn't be selfish. Most people don't get it. As they grow old, they get bitter. They don't understand passing something along, preparing a place. They don't understand that. So, where am I? Six? Nine? But, hold on, Annalise, you're trying to make me finish, girl. You push me is that right? That is right. Show sure you. Verse nine. Thank you. <laughs> I thought you was rushing me off. Behold, a son shall be born to thee who shall be a man of what? Rest. rest. I just, we just talked about it with Noah. Lamech had Noah who was a man of rest. David had Solomon who was a man of rest. I'm going to give him rest from all his enemies round about for his name shall be Solomon and I will give him peace and quietness unto Israel. I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. My goodness. This is what the Lord is able to do. Bring peace and quietness. And it's in those moments as the scriptures say, after the hurricane happens in our lives, after the whirlwind, the storm, yeah. the tempest, God will bring about that peace and quietness. Yeah. And guess what? He comes talking to us in the still small voice. Yeah. Yeah. And we can hear it though, loud and clear. These are the directions. The Lord is ordering our steps. Again, no matter what's going on out there, the Lord is ordering our steps. He 
shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I'll be his father. I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with thee and prosper you and build the house of the Lord your God as he has said of thee. Three more verses and I'm done. Verse 17, skip down a little bit. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to do what? Help, Help his son. Help my son Solomon. Saying, is not the Lord your God with you? We're going to accomplish what the Lord said because we know he's with us. And he is not, and I'm sorry, and he had, uh, he not, had he not given you rest on every side. Every side he's given you rest. For he had given the inhabitants of the land to my hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. That means all of our enemies have been subdued before God. God has done it. They're defeated, for lack of a better word. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. That's our goal. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fear. We don't have to fret. We don't have to wonder how it's going to get done. Amen. This is our message. This is our goal Amen. for 2022. This is what we should be focused on. Set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Yes. That's yes. it. Seek how to please the Lord. Every day, be obsessed with getting better and pleasing the Lord every single day. That's it. This is it. You want to know what the marker is for 2022? This is it. Write it down. Make it plain. Repeat it every day. Set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Mentally, physically, spiritually, every part of your being. The Lord is saying, I want to use that to seek after me. Okay? Seek the Lord your God. Arise, therefore. And get to work. Build the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. And of course, all of this will be done to his glory and it happened just like David prepared it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank God for his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Gay. Leave the wonderful word that God has given to us.